Hi, welcome to Student Presentation Tools presented by me, Tara Graves, for the Washoe County School District 21st Century Learning Division. Here are the objectives for our webinar. Uh, increase your awareness of four web-based presentation tools. Show you how to get started and some of the basic features of each tool. Um, I'll share some samples and ideas for using each tool. And hopefully by the end you'll be motivated to continue exploring uh, one or more of the tools. When we work with teachers, uh, we focus everything that we do on our guiding framework. And this comes from the Microsoft Innovative Teaching and Learning Research uh, and we call it the six dimensions. So let me show you uh, this one pager that we share with uh, teachers. And this, these are the six dimensions. If you look across the bottom, collaboration, knowledge construction, real world problem solving and innovation, use of technology for learning, self-regulation, and skilled communication. These are the six dimensions of creating a 21st century learning environment in your classroom. And these dimensions guide the learning activities that are planned. So let's just take a look at collaboration. As you're creating learning activities and you're thinking maybe collaboration is something that um, is definitely a part of the activity, take a look at what constitutes collaboration. So the general overview right here. They're working in pairs or groups to discuss an issue or solve a problem and or create a product. And we start from the bottom and work our way up. And we have to say yes to this box to be able to move up to the next one. So looking at your learning activity, are students required to work in pairs or groups? If you can say yes to that one, you go to the next box. Do students have shared responsibility? That means that all the students that are working together receive a grade for the work that they do with their partner or their group. So if you can say yes to that, then you move up to the next one and so on. Uh, more information about uh, the specifics of each of these is available and we'll talk a little more about this in our um, at the, towards the end of this webinar and I'll identify there are three dimensions that are are supported really nicely with presentation tools. So here's some old school presentation tools for students. Uh, you see the Science Fair Project Board, the Magazine Collage, that good old fifth grade state project. Uh, here's a simple book report. Uh, you have your shoebox diorama. And of course, no report or project is complete without a nice cover. Once teachers uh, got access to Microsoft Office and PowerPoint. Um, this is, uh, was a game changer, um, especially if the teacher had access to um, a projector and a whiteboard and so on, where uh, they could create uh, presentations for their students uh, to learn from, so using it in instruction. Then teachers uh, would start having students create PowerPoints as their project. And if you're doing this now, that's very good. I'm glad that um, you're reaching out into uh, using some technology uh, with students and having them use the technology to create projects. Um, but as we all know, we've probably experienced those uh, PowerPoint shows that are um, pretty painful to get through. And I have a video uh, coming up in the next slide uh, that will emphasize some of those uh, things that presenters do that makes PowerPoint horrible to deal with. Um, so on this next slide, 
the video should stop and you'll be directed to uh, watch this video. It's kind of funny. Uh, it kind of takes it to the extreme of, of things that people do when they create their presentations or when they give their presentations. So go ahead and click on the link that pops up and then stop the video at about 5 minutes 22 seconds and then come back. You don't need to watch the whole 9 minutes. Uh, yeah, that video is pretty funny. So think about um, your audience and have students think about their audience. There's, there has got to be a better way. And today's webinar is to help you see that there are better ways, and I'm going to show you four of them. Uh, first, we'll start with Slides in Google Drive, then Prezi, then Haiku Deck, and Glogster. So let's take a closer look at Slides in Google Drive. Getting started, you'll want to create an account at drive.google.com. If you already have Gmail, this is really easy. Um, if you don't already have Gmail, you don't need to create a new email account. You can use your school district email to create an account in Google Drive. The suite features, um, it is cloud-based, uh, so it lives on the internet, so wherever you get access to the internet you can access your presentation slides. Uh, you have real-time collaboration so more than one person can collaborate at the same time in a Google slideshow. There are comments which I'll show you and it plays well with other Google apps so if you want to import a YouTube video or images uh, there's also a research feature built in and um, also uh, any Google Docs or spreadsheets. We'll get to some samples after I show you the basics and then we'll end uh, Google Slides with an incredible video here. So let's take a look at when you first uh, create your account and you go to slides, it will take you on a tour. And these are a lot of the slideshows that I have already created. So it talks you through. And it just shows you the different features. Okay, so I'm going to show you, I'm going to go ahead and click on create a new presentation. And as you can see, it looks very similar to PowerPoint. It has a lot of different themes to choose from. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pick this one. Actually, I wanted to show you this other thing too. You can also select what size you want your slides and I, I really like the widescreen one because you can fit a lot more um, images and things. Um, you can change the background colors, you have the different slide layouts, you have transitions just like in PowerPoint. Okay, you can rename it. So I'm just going to click through on the menus. The revision history is awesome when you have more than one person working on a slideshow because you can see who made what change to it. So with students, if some uh, some student goes in and deletes something that someone else had done, you can go back to right before it was deleted and restore it. And because this lives online, you can also publish it and embed it in other websites. You can also share uh, the link with anyone, parents, 
other teachers. So I'll just go through and show you the different menus. Okay. Now the comments feature is awesome because when students create a slideshow, they share they can share it so that anybody that has the link can make a comment. And this is useful for teachers to put feedback in. Uh, let's say please change color scheme. And so when they go back into their slideshow and they see that you've left comments on certain slides, they can go in and they can either reply to your comment or they can uh, mark it as resolved, meaning uh, they changed it and so they're going to mark it as resolved. But you can always go back and see all of the comments that were left. Um, so it's really handy for feedback. The share button Uh, determines who can collaborate. So right now it says private, but I, if I move up on my choices, this is the most open, so anybody on the internet could find it, and this is the most restricted. So right now it says anyone can find it and access it, and they can only view it, but if I change it to they can comment, then anybody that has that link can make a comment. If you want to have people, um, anybody edit, you can do the edit button here, but a better way to have collaborators is to invite them. So that way you're making sure that not just anyone who finds it online can get in there and change things. Um, so this is where you would add students um, they can add each other to be collaborators and you again you can change the um, type of access that they have. So that's just the basics. Um, let me show you some samples. And these are all slideshows I've created for classes that I teach which are mostly online classes. And I'll show you as we go through where some comments are. So with this, uh, this was part of their assignment. They had to go through the presentation and pick one or more of the slides that really, um, really stuck in their mind or something they wanted to comment on. So they would have to comment and then I could uh, reply to that comment and then he expanded here. So it's a good way to um, have uh, interactivity on a slideshow. Another one is a collaborative project that participants in this class were directed to add a slide to this presentation uh, based on ideas they had for using different Web 2.0 tools. So in this one, people were able to actually edit the slideshow, not just comment. And they had the freedom to add images and change the color scheme and so on. And again, it was very interactive. You can't do that on a PowerPoint. Once a PowerPoint's there, people can't interact. So that's a really awesome benefit of having something like Google Slides um, to allow for people to interact. And then one more sample. Now this one, um, the settings for it only allows people to view it. So they can view it, but what's great about it is, because I don't want them to change this, this is a template, um, I want them to make a copy of it. And then once it's in their own Google Drive account, they can um, change it the way they want to. And what they do in this activity, 
me scroll down, they read the text and then they have to um, sort these examples into the yes side or the no side. Once they've saved it in their own account then they can they can share it with me and I can check and see how they did on the sorting activity. Okay, when uh, the video stops, you will be, uh, this link will pop up to view this um, example. And this is a really uh, extreme far end of super creative use of Google Slides. And I don't, I don't expect that you will be um, creating this or even your students creating this, but just to show you the power of this tool, um, it's a free tool, it's available worldwide, um, people can collaborate with other people anywhere in the world that they can access this. So um, enjoy this video, you're going to be amazed. Um, so, when, so come back after the video. Amazing, amazing, isn't it? Wow. Okay, our next tool is Prezi. Prezi has um, come a long way since they first started. Um, let me go back here. Uh, how you get started is you, there's a link here and I'll just show you what it looks like so when you get there yourself, um, and it's not going because I signed in already. Anyway, um, it is free. Um, and the way that it's free for educators or even just uh, students is all of the things that you create are public. You have to actually pay to make them private. So that's something to think about uh, when you have students use it. There is a way to set up uh, a classroom um, through a teacher account, but then it, it isn't free. Uh, there is a small fee, which isn't too bad. Okay. Um, before we start looking at them, I want to show you or talk about the suite features over here. Uh, again, this one is on, uh, on the internet. It's cloud-based. They have really awesome templates and animations. You can embed any kind of media. So you can put in images, uh, videos, audio files, and text. If you've been using PowerPoint for a while and you, and you think, oh gosh, I don't want to have to redo them all, you can import them in into Prezi and then work with it from there. So that does save you a lot of time. It has excellent support resources and then a gallery of Prezi's that you can actually use. So if you find one that works for you, you don't have to recreate it. You can just use one that's existing. So let's go ahead and have you watch this video. So when the video, this video stops, you'll be directed to the link. And it's just a very short one minute, I think, video that will give you an idea of how to get started. Okay, so yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, so if we look at, let's look at some of the samples. So here's one. This is under the staff picks. And what I like about Prezi is it gives you this big picture. So you can start when you're zoomed all the way out and you can see the big picture. And then as you go through, it zooms in. And see there's a video here.
and it plays within the frame. Okay, and so on. So you get the idea. And they have a lot of different templates. I go ahead and go to my account and show you what this looks like. So I clicked on New Prezi. And I can look at all these different templates. And I like it because it really helps you with um, that visual metaphor. So if there are certain steps uh, that they need to take, uh, this would be a good one. So if I pick that one, let me show you what comes up. Okay, so it's all set for you. This is a wonderful um, improvement from when, it, when Prezi first came out. You had to actually create your own path. That's what they call it, where how it starts and where it goes. Okay, so this is all just set up for me. And I can, sorry, I'm zooming in and out, but I can just click and add the text that I want to. I can also bring in um, images or videos. I can change the shape of the frame. Okay. I can customize the theme, so if I want to change the colors, I can do that. Here I can insert image symbols and shapes, a YouTube video, something else. So if there's um, another f a file that I want to have them open, music, voiceover. So you can add your own voice. Okay. So once you get in there and start uh, playing around with it, you'll you'll see how um, fairly easy it is to get started. Let me click on this one. How to be a super awesome teacher with Prezi in your classroom. Now this one is talking mostly about um, using Prezi for instruction, which is a great first step. Uh, don't worry that you need to already have students create a Prezi on day one. You should get pretty comfortable with it yourself. Uh, you don't have to know everything but get pretty comfortable with it yourself before you have students start creating them. Okay, so just clicking through here to show you uh, different things you can do. So you get the idea. You can look at these again um, more in depth after you've uh, finished the webinar. I'll show you this one. Um, this is an interesting one about uh, technology in today's classrooms. So really interesting. It's just much more engaging and interesting to look at than your basic uh, PowerPoint slides. And then this last example, the Prezi Awards. 
and I'll scroll down here to the best educational Prezi. So I won't go through the whole thing, but yeah, pretty interesting on how they use the Zoom. And, and again, it takes time to learn every tool that you, uh, that you want to explore, but uh, there's a lot of great examples out there. And what's cool, too, is that some of them you can actually reuse and um, edit it to fit your own purpose. Okay, our next one is Haiku Deck. Now, Haiku Deck originally was just an iPad app. Um, you could share them online, but you could only create them um, on an iPad. Well, now they've changed it where you can create online as well. So to get started, you just go to haikudeck.com and create an account. And like I said, you can download the app for your iPad if you have one, or you can just use it online sweet features here what I really love about it well two things there the images when you search you just put in um, a concept word or a vocabulary word or something or a topic and it automatically pops up with all these copyright free images that you can use um, this one also allows for collaboration so more than one person can work on a haiku deck at a time um, and it really uh, forces the emphasis of the concept. So when, when you see some of these samples, you'll know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> it emphasizes that the image should be most of the slide, not the text. And I realize that my slides here have a lot of text, but I'm using it in a different way. Um, but I'll show you uh, what I mean when we get to some of the samples excellent support resources which is always nice when you're learning a new tool and when the video stops I want you to uh, you'll click on the link that's provided so you can watch a short video on Haiku Deck Okay, so that was a really nice video. It gives you just a real short glimpse of what they look like. So let me go to uh, the website, all right? And you can do it, again, for the iPad or just for the web. And so go ahead and click. Okay, and so here's what comes up when uh, you first start a new deck. You can click on the themes, and there are only a few of them that are free, and the other ones that are a little more complicated, you have to pay for. Okay, but these are pretty cool to start with. So let me go ahead and pick this one. And over here are the menus where I can pick what kind of slide I want. So I'm going to pick that one. And then the image. So I'm going to pick a word, play. And see all the images that pop up? So I'm going to pick this one. And notice how the image is the entire slide and the text is just a small part of the slide. Thinking about doing this with students then, 
when they put in a vocabulary word. So let me let me do another slide here. Let me add another slide. And I think I'll pick this one. And let me think of a vocabulary word. Okay, so my vocabulary word I put in was eager. And see the different ones that come up. It's funny, there's so many military ones. But it really forces uh, students to consider the true meaning of the word. Alright, so I'm going to pick this one and I'm going to say that my word is eager and they can write a simile so um, I'm as eager as a baby goose waiting for food Okay, and so on. So you can just go through. Students can create the slides for the vocabulary words instead of, you know, the same old, let's just write the word and the definition and use it in a sentence. Uh, it gives them something more interesting to do. And they can add notes here. So if they are presenting this, uh, they can write in their notes here. So this forces that um, best practice of not reading the slides aloud and just being able to talk about something and have the image and the slide there as, as a visual aid. Okay, so that's Haiku Deck. Let me show you some of the samples here. So there is a gallery. Okay, so you can search those that are already in there. They also have a blog. Okay, uh, here's an interesting one that a primary class put together so they can work on it um, as a class project. So it shows the outline below. Okay. And here's one for science vocabulary. And that's Haiku Deck. Our last tool is Glogster. And thinking back to that uh, one of those first slides with the magazine collage, this is the same idea but in a digital format. So it says poster yourself. That's what it is. So you get a poster, so uh, one pager that has um, basically looks like a collage. And I'll show you some samples so you get what I mean but the sweet features over here this one also was originally just um, this was just online but now they have a new iPad app it just came out um, this uh, this last month so uh, it, it's 
I'm sure they, they're going to have a lot of fixes that they'll need to use, but uh, it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, highly customizable so that uh, students can be as creative as they want to be. They can embed video, text, they can actually at do attachments. Uh, they can put in links to websites, um, images. Uh, more than one student can collaborate on a blog at one time. And there's tons of samples that you can use um, in your instruction already on Glogpedia. Now how you get started, you must go to edu.glogster.com. There is also a www.glogster. Don't go to that one. That one is, I know, is blocked here in our district. Um, so you want to go through the edu side. And let me show you how you get there so that um, you get the free version. Okay, so you'll go to uh, the EDU site, click on pricing, and see if you just look here, you'll be um, getting frustrated because you'll say, I don't want to pay $40 a year. So scroll down, and then you click on this free version plus a 30-day premium trial. That doesn't mean you have to pay after 30 days. The free version is always free. It's just giving you 30 days trial for the premium version. Uh, and again, it's all about um, the features. When you pay money, you do get more features. Um, if you if you create an account and you find that you like it and you want to get the the better versions or the more features, uh, you might want to take a look at one of these two options. Okay, but for now, just go for the free version, and uh, you can get started. Whoops. Okay, so when the video stops, you're going to see a link for this Glogster in 90 seconds. So go ahead and um, watch the video and then come back to the presentation. Okay, well, welcome back. I wanted to show you a few things. Uh, these are some samples here. Here's one that was created by a teacher who recorded students solving pr these problems. And this is a nice way to have um, students when they're working at, uh, on their homework, if they forget how to do one of these problems, they can always go to this link and view the examples. Excellent, excellent way. So if you would have students create these, uh, they would need to um, use another tool to record themselves solving a problem, and then they can embed it in their blog. Here's another example. So text here, this is how you would attach something, clicking on the paper clip. Here's an embedded video. And it plays within the blog itself. Okay, there's another video here. Um, students can also put in links. Let me go to one that uh, has some links. This one's um, a teacher created one for the letter G. Lots of animations going on. There's a video. So 
So these are good for, um, again, if you have a teacher website or you use something like Edmodo or if you just want to email this out to students' uh, parents um, as a resource for them. It's a great way to keep them involved. I'm going to go to Glogpedia and show you how you can find, right now there's over 7,000 of them. These are all the different categories. So you just click on one. Let's click on this one here. And they do take a little bit to load. Some of those pieces are still loading. Again, so you can just see uh, they can put in images, they can put in these animations. Definitely a project that kids would be excited to create. And that's Glockster. Um, let me show you one more. Actually, let's let me show you one more thing before uh, we move on. And basically, the how to create one. So there's all these templates. Okay. And they're already everything's already set up for you. So you just type in. When you click on there, this is where you can rearrange the images. You can find a different image. You can hyperlink it out to um, a website. Okay, you can put a video there. This is just the text. You can pick the different font. and save it and preview it. You can take a an, uh, yeah, photo as well. It's pretty um, useful and helpful when uh, in the template so it does help you create it. Okay so thinking about all four of those that you saw uh, why would you want to use them? So we'll talk about, again, the reasons. Much more engaging. If they're doing um, a PowerPoint, uh, a lot of kids, and my daughter's in high school now, but she's done a few PowerPoints even starting in fourth grade. And she's kind of over it now. She's kind of bored with it. So using one of these four tools much more interesting for them for one so they'll even want to do the project. Uh, the next one is using technology for knowledge construction. As they are building their project or their presentation um, they really have to know their content because they have to be able to pick out the best pieces of information the most appropriate images the most appropriate videos, um, everything. So they're not only learning how to use that tool, but they're having to really evaluate and synthesize the information um, that they're presenting. Um, all of these tools, uh, no limits to creativity. They really have the world at their fingertips when they're using a tool online. Um, and it's it's good for them to be able to um, bring in different media to get their message across. Uh, all of these tools are collaborative so more than one person can uh, create that project um, at any given time and multimodal so they're they're using text they're using images they're using video they're using audio. Uh, it really gets them immersed in all types of different communication. 
and again it's online so students can work on it at school they can work on it at home they can work on it anywhere they have a device that they can get online so thinking back to the six dimensions of 21st century learning I told you there were three that were supported the most by student presentations. So when the video stops, you'll be shown that uh, guide, that one page guide again. And I've given you some clues. I'd like you to pick the three that you think are best supported. Okay, welcome back. Did you get it right? Use of technology for learning, skilled communication, and collaboration. That's pretty good, three out of six. So here's the motivating part. Ideas that were presented in the webinar are also linked on the our Pinterest board and if you click on the icon it'll take you to the Pinterest board where you can explore lots of ideas tutorials um, samples suggestions everything you would need to get going with one or more of those tools Here's our disclaimer. Uh, you need to be familiar with the student privacy laws that are out there uh, when using any online tool or app. Uh, it's your responsibility to uh, familiarize yourself with them and um, talk to your principal and get parent permission for any of the tools that you use. Uh, just to make sure that parents are aware of potential potential issues They're, I don't want to scare you there it's just you need to be aware when using anything where students are creating accounts or the work that they do is published online and there's a link down there we do have another Pinterest board that has some really good resources on there to help you understand uh, what the laws are And if you want to learn more, you can visit our website at wcsd21.com. Definitely follow us on Twitter. If you're not on Twitter yet, it'd be a good idea for you to join because it is probably the largest uh, personal learning uh, network for teachers um, and a lot of leaders in education and innovation. And again, our main Pinterest site is right there. I want to thank you very much for your time and your attention. Uh, if you need to get a hold of me, there's my email address. Definitely follow me on Twitter at nvterragraves. And the, links, uh, the link to these slides are found at that uh, URL. And thank you for your participation.